Hey everyone, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents. Our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. Well, this turned out to be an impromptu winter series. I always planned on doing my top 10 favorite winter fragrances. What I didn't plan on was the huge amount of requests for citrus fragrances in the winter. And now this video, floral winter fragrances. However, when you think about it, it makes sense. If you genuinely are craving those spring and summer fragrances, then what screams spring more than florals? So for those of you who love your floral fragrances, let's jump right into the video. This list is in no particular order. And first up, we're gonna talk about a fragrance that most of you probably think of as a tropical beachy fragrance. However, for me, it's a bit too heavy in the warm weather and it actually becomes headache inducing. So I decided instead of getting rid of it because I really do love the fragrance to try it once it became cooler outside. And that was the trick. For me, this is perfect for fall and for winter. This is from the House of Aaron and it is called Hibiscus Palm. Baby, oh, there's hibiscus in this, there's ylang ylang in this, there's frangipani, so you definitely get that. I understand why everybody feels like it's a tropical vibe. It is. However, I'm spending the winter in the tropics and, and it's um this oddball blizzard going on because that is when I have to wear this. Um, there's also coconut milk in this, um, vanilla, musk, and ginger. The ginger in this, man, the ginger in this. This is the ginger that you're going to get in your Twilly Day Hermes. And I just love it with those tropical flowers and the musk and the vanilla and the coconut milk. This is beautiful. By all accounts on paper, this absolutely should be a beachy tropical fragrance. But for me, it just works better in cold weather. So again, that is Aaron's Hibiscus Palm. Next up from the House of Mansara, we are going to talk about the beautiful masterpiece that is Velvet Vanilla. So this fragrance is always on my top 10 winter list. And a few of you caught that she wasn't on the list for the video I did the other day. The reason I did that was because after I released my top five favorite citrus fragrances for winter, a lot of you came through asking about a florals list. So I pulled Velvet Vanilla off of my regular list because with the powerhouse tuberose, um, rose, jasmine, angelica vibe that you get from here and clove. I love the clove. She fits nicely on the florals list. Yes, she can also be in my top 10 for my winter fragrances, but I didn't want to be redundant. So Velvet Vanilla. I could also have put Coco Mademoiselle on here because of the rose. But since she is on the citrus list, again, she won't be on this list for florals. But Velvet Vanilla is just so beautiful. You do have a bunch of notes uh, listed here. Black Currant. You're going to get Musk and Vanilla and Mandarin and Pear and all those other things. And Jasmine. All those things that are touted to be in here on the notes list. What I get is a bubblegummy tuberose. I get that beautiful Angelica. The same type of Angelica that you're going to get in um, Guerlain's Angelique Noir or any of the uh, inspirations that you might have from Dua or from Juliana's Perfumes or wherever. But that type of Angelica is in here and the clove. And see the rose and the jasmine don't speak up um, in this for me. The vanilla in here gives you that sweetness, but it's not a it's not a typical, you know, vanilla extract or even a super duper creaminess. I think the creaminess that comes around in here is actually from that bubblegummy tuberose vibe, which could be that tuberose and that angelica and that um, musk and vanilla coming together. However, it is created. It is absolutely stunning. This is a potent, potent fragrance. Velvet vanilla lasts and lasts and lasts. And on me, people often tell me they smell cupcakes or cake. I don't get that because the angelica and the tuberose are just too loud and too boisterous for me um, to, to switch over into pastries. It's not edible to me, but I get that when people compliment me all the time. Huge compliment getter. Really, really huge um, in that department. So Velvet Vanilla, y'all, a true masterpiece. This next fragrance is one that was a hard pill to swallow. It was instantly headache inducing. I love the smell, much like hibiscus palm. 
However, I just, I cannot wear something that is going to make me not feel well. You know what I'm saying? So I set it on the shelf with the hopes again that I could come back to it and maybe um, in cooler weather it not affect me the way that it did in the spring and summer. Lo and behold, again, I don't know how this works, but it is beautiful in the fall and in the winter. So this is from the House of Hermes and this is called Un Jardin Sur la Legume. So this one here has magnolia, it has lily, it has something called pittosporum, which I keep saying I'm gonna look up and I never do. And it also has C notes and woody notes. And man, this is clean and floral and sweet and beautiful and kind. This is that fragrance that I just feel like the nicest teacher or the nicest counselor or the school nurse or somebody that you should really be able to trust who's going to be loving and encouraging would wear. Uh, yeah, again, that is Un Jardin Sur la Lagoon from the House of Hermes. This next fragrance is a jasmine bomb. One that I did not think I was going to keep in my collection. Notice there's a theme here, you guys, with these fragrances, with these heavy florals. And this one wasn't headache inducing. It was just too floral and too woody for me. The notes in this are bergamot. There's also woody notes. There's white musk, which I love white musk. And I bet you it's the saving grace in this. There's gardenia, which I love. And then there's two kilotons of jasmine. I mean, oh my gosh. So this is from the house of Giorgio Armani and this is called Light de Joa. I am sensitive to tuberose, to rose, and to jasmine when they are used in just like catastrophic amounts. And if it were not for the bergamot and the white musk in this, I'm telling you, I would not keep it. It smells absolutely amazing from the bottle, from the little atomizer here. But once you let it out into the air, into your environment, listen, um, yeah, this one is a doozy. And so for me, I can only wear this when it's cooler outside. I can only even think about trying to reach for this when it's cooler outside. Jasmine, I'm telling you guys, I'm on the fence about whether I even like it or not for real. It just has to be done to perfect. God, I wish it really smelled like it does right now after not being sprayed for quite some time and just sitting there light. This is a beast mode fragrance um, or a diva mode fragrance. Shout out to Lulu. And this one is the heaviest and the longest lasting of all of them that I've tried. The only one I haven't tried, I think, is Sun. Um, and it's like hard to find. I just don't care enough to chase it. I have enough of them. But yeah, Light de Joa only in the cold weather. <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about Miss Dior Absolutely Blooming. I absolutely love this fragrance. Uh, this is a beautiful use of blackberry, raspberry, peony, pomegranate. You also get you some white musk, some may rose, and some pink pepper. So this is fruity, it is slightly spicy, and it is definitely floral. That may rose is potent. And so is that pink pepper, but so is the raspberry, the blackberry. I just... I really like this, even though I know it's on the cusp of something I wouldn't like. You know, it's almost too spicy for me, but I keep it and I wear it in the fall and the winter, so it's all good. But I will say, I don't think she'll be a repurchase. I do enjoy her, but I don't think she'll be a repurchase. This next fragrance gives you a little bit of everything. You're going to get you some wild jasmine. First time I ever saw that as a note. You also have some wisteria in here, some pink pepper. You're also going to get some red lily, I do believe. Um, passion fruit. There's lemon. There's bergamot. There's grapefruit. There's also cashmere and sandalwood patchouli. I do believe there's also vanilla in here. This is just a beauty. The wild jasmine, though, that is what this fragrance is really about, that wild jasmine. And everything else just plays a part to bring that out and make it not too heavy. So I would never reach for this in the warmer months. But again, for fall and for winter, uh, this is beautiful. This is Roberto Cavalli Paradiso Assoluto. Guys, even though I just... Oh my gosh. Listen, she's so pretty and she's so inexpensive. If you like Jasmine, I just don't see a possibility of you not liking this. I mean, 
I don't really, you know, I, I like Jasmine. I'm not a lover of Jasmine. And I could really sometimes, most days, go without Jasmine. Like, seriously. But this one, oh, just, I love her. Next up, we have a fragrance that you guys have heard me talk about so many times. I have so many flankers of this fragrance. I have put a dent in here that's going to shock some of you. If you've been watching my videos and you saw that she was pretty much full at the beginning of fall um, last year. And honey, I've just been craving her. I don't, I don't know what else to say. This baby is definitely big on the May Rose and the patchouli and the vanilla. You also have Cassis in here um, in Woody Notes and Broxen, Freesia. You know I love Freesia. You know I love Ambroxen. This is C or the Parfum from the house of Giorgio Armani. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look what I did. She, I think, is going to be gone um, by the end of spring. I, I think that I'm going to finish this bottle this year. This next fragrance, I'm only going to mention very briefly. I've talked about her several times before. If you've watched any of my fall videos or my haul videos when I hauled her. This one is discontinued, I think. It's so hard to find her. If you go on Macari or eBay, people are charging $450. Do not spend that type of money on this. While she is a beauty, this is Roses Berberanza from the house of Maison Lancome. I love this fragrance. A very loud, very potent, very busy and chaotic rose fragrance. A nutty, woody, rosy fragrance. And I love her. On to something that we can actually find readily available. <laughs> this next fragrance touts three notes. It says Italian bergamot, white freesia, and petite grain. I'm telling you, there's something about this fragrance and the Sir La Lagoon that just, I'm telling you, it's just on the cusp of making my head want to explode the first time I smell them if it is too warm in the house or outside. But as soon as it's cool or chilly or freezing, I fall in love. This is Belle from Toka. She's relatively new, might be their newest release. I do believe their newest release because I, I tend to stay on top of what they're over there doing. I just, and matter, as a matter of fact, I don't even get the headache inducing thing with her anymore because I tend to only pick her up when it's chilly in the house or cold enough outside and I know I can get away with it. This is just, and this is a beautiful spring summer fragrance. Guys, I don't know what it is about me that some things just trigger something and I'm like, nah. We need a, a cold, chilly wind to dull the senses a bit. Uh, but yeah, Belle by Toka, so pretty. Such a pretty, pretty floral. Last but not least, we're going to talk about one of the loudest floral fragrances in my collection. Turkish Rose is no joke. Gardenia isn't a sleeper either. And I just, the musk and the sandalwood, there's just a lot going on in this fragrance. In the beginning, you're going to get you some pear. You're going to get you some raspberry leaf. This is a very beautiful fragrance. This is Coach New York. Honey, not for the faint at heart. If you are not here for a rose note, don't do this to yourself. Coach is coming for your life on that floral tip. It's a very heady floral. Again, love it, but only in the cold weather. I cannot do it unless it's cold outside. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list for my favorite winter floral fragrances. Heavy on the jasmine, heavy on the rose, heavy on the tuberose. And I noticed a lot of white musk going on in these fragrances. So I just tend to like what I like. And the other thing I noticed about these fragrances is when it's not cold outside, almost all of them are headache inducing for me. So the only time I can put them on is when it's super cold outside. Please don't forget to click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and select that notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. I want to talk to you guys in the comments. Let me know, are you out there craving those citrus and floral fragrances? Do not forget to check out my citrus video, top five citruses, and let me know what your favorite citrus fragrances are over there in the comments, as well as reply to this one in the comments and let me know where your favorite winter floral fragrances are and if you've already gotten to that point to where you're craving them. We're in the middle of some kind of blizzard right now. This is day two of work being canceled, schools being virtual for the kids because it's too dangerous to be outside on the ice and all that jazz. And it's like, 
I've been reaching for my cozy fragrances again. I'm like, okay, it's it's real, real cold right now. I don't want no florals. I don't want no citruses. Give me the gourmands. Today, my scent of the day is actually velvet vanilla. Go figure. Anyway, guys, want to talk to you in the comments, as always. And until then, bye.